Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, are you ready to make our demands? Now, listen, it's important. You know, you, you just obey what Jesus has commanded. And when we do this, do it with the attitude of expecting a miracle. You know as I'm about to pray now, I'm expecting a miracle today. So are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread today. It's coming to me now. Angels, go. Bring the things that I need for today. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, praise God. Such a short prayer. Yes, but powerful. You know what makes it powerful? Because the word of the Lord is in it. He commanded us to pray that prayer. Now remember what Jehoshaphat said. Believe in the Lord your God and you will be established. Believe in his prophet. Now I come as a prophet to convey to you the word of the Lord. He says pray like this and when you believe God who said it and when you believe his prophet who said God have said it praise God he says you will be established and you will prosper God bless you so let's pray now father we thank you for today's broadcast we are ready to open our hearts to receive everything you are pouring out in us and I declare right now burdens are being lifted yokes are being destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus. I'm seeing someone with goiter on the neck. Goiter is a swelling. I command it to dissolve and leave your body right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go and don't come back. You are not coming back. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If there's any sickness in your body, see, when you hear things like this take place, you just say, Lord, I receive for myself also. Praise God. Be healed. Any part of your body that is hurting, be healed right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking since Monday about the purpose, hope, and manifestation of God's calling in our lives. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Rapasayaka Baradiheshe. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. Paul preaching here. He's writing this letter to the church in Ephesus. And look at what he says. He says, he says look from verse 15. He says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and love unto all the saints. Say, I heard you guys are demonstrating faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love to all the saints. He says, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayer. Okay, then, now what's the prayer point? Look at the prayer point. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. See, he says, I'm praying for you that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ will, will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Those two things are very vital in your Christian work. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation. Without the spirit of wisdom, you can't navigate this Christian journey. You can't. Without the spirit of revelation, you don't even know exactly what you are doing. Praise God. Yeah, you don't know. So there is such a thing called the spirit of wisdom and then the spirit of revelation. Now, look at this. Look at this. The spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of him. Look at verse 18 now. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Paul says, I'm praying for you that God will give you these two things, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. And then he now says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened because 
when the spirit of wisdom and revelation is working in your life to know the Lord Jesus Christ, something definitely is going to happen to you. And what is that thing? The eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was telling you, was it yesterday or so? I was telling you that Moses didn't die. How did I know that? The spirit of wisdom and revelation. And suddenly what happened to me? The eyes of my understanding was enlightened. I said, oh, now I see. <laughs> yeah, I understand now. And how does that affect me? We'll talk about that when we begin to talk about the manifestation of his calling. But you see, first of all, there must be that spirit of wisdom and revelation that enlightens the eyes of your understanding. Now, what is it praying that your eye, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened for? That you will know what is the hope of God's calling. Now, we talked about God's purpose. Uh, what's purpose? The purpose of God's calling for your life, to be a Christian. That's the purpose. He's that He wants to give you life. Now, what is the hope of God's calling in your life? The hope of God's calling is that you, you will receive the life that God has given. Did you hear me? The hope of God's calling is that you haven't believed in Jesus. You know what the scripture says? It says who? We. <laughs> God has not called us to serve him in vain. He's not called us to serve him in vain. We don't serve God in vain. We don't serve God like we are just here as pencils in the hand of God. So anything he wants us to do, we do. We don't expect anything back. No, sir. There is such a thing called the hope. So you that have come. Now, first of all, he, the purpose, he made available life. He put in place the giver of the life. He put the authority of life into his hands. He, he, he does all that work. Now, so he has a purpose. He wants to give you life. Now, you who have come to him, receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, you who came from wherever you came from, now you claim you go to church. Now you claim you're paying attention to his word. Hey, there is a hope. There is that thing to look forward to. There is that thing to look at and say, this is why I'm doing this. Praise God. What is the hope? Is the hope. Of eternal life praise God you see our hearts must agree as one so that we can function in what he expects us to function with what do I mean our heart our hearts and his heart that's God's heart must agree so if God's purpose is to give you life then your hope is to I'll, I'll tell you this you get an employment in an organization and then they say hey at the end of the month we're gonna be paying you one thousand dollars two thousand dollars or or um, two hundred thousand five hundred thousand or whatever they, they said this is what we are going to be paying you and this is what we want you to do then we will pay you this sum of money now you you consider all that and then say okay i'll take it now when you take it they don't pay you that money in the first day of your working in that place you understand what i'm saying but you start doing that job now from day one when you start doing that job you are expressing a hope in that organization that at the end of 30 days or 31 days or 28 days and i mean according to what they have arranged and planned and according to what their system is they are going to pay you this amount of money so as the day is approaching you also you are expectant why because there was a promise there was a purpose and then now you are the one to have hope so you do your job well. You make sure you don't, you're not, you're not um, slow or sluggish at your job. You are perfect in all the things that you are assigned to do. Now, why are you doing all that? Because of the hope. You've got something to receive at the end of the day. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that's for those who are working for that purpose. You get what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is there is a call, first of all. There is a purpose for the call. Now, you who have received the call, do you understand the hope? I'll show you a scripture in Titus chapter number 3. Or Titus 1 first. Let's look at the book of Titus. Titus chapter 1. Now, look at this. Verse let me start from verse 1. It says, Paul, a servant of God 
and an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. Now look at verse 2. In hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Did you see that now? When did God promise eternal life? Before the world began. Are you serious? He promised eternal life before the world began. Yes, he did. I can tell you briefly about that. You know, the Bible spoke about Jesus. He said he was the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. You know the reason he was slain before the foundation of the world? It's not because God had planned that Adam and Eve would sin and do all those stuff. No, it is because right from the beginning, God had ordained that it is Jesus who will come and give life to us. So when God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, that was what he said. But in reality, in, 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 in Genesis chapter 2, Adam, where Adam and Eve, or Adam, was not made in the likeness or in the image of God. Adam was made out of the dust of the ground and God breathed upon him the breath of life and he became a living soul. He became a living soul. And God spoke, took him and put him in the, in the, in the garden of Eden. And he said, hey, these two trees don't eat of it. The day you eat it, you will surely die. And there, are two, there were two trees in that garden, tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. Now you see that tree of life was a special tree, praise God. Now that was the tree. Now it was not just about the tree, they were physical trees, yes, normal trees. The Bible said when Satan deceived Eve, she looked at the tree again and realized that, come on, it's a normal tree, there's nothing special, it's just a tree that has fruits that can be eaten. And she just felt, I mean, why, why would God pay so much? She didn't realize that it was a point of obedience. The tree were marks of obedience in their life. The tree itself carries no power. But you see, the instruction behind the tree carries power. You see, the same thing with what we do when we obey God. When we tithe, the money carries no power. What carries power? It is your obedience to God that carries power. Praise God. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the power of Titan. It's not the money you give. But the fact that you obey God and take out this 10%, that when, he, when you receive your, your, a blessing or an income, you take out this. Why are you taking out the 10%? God has commanded me. And then, like I said, you go before him and say, Lord, I've got your money. Can you lead me to where you want me to deploy? And then he speaks to you. So that obedience is where the power is. So you see that tree was a normal tree. But you know what? It was the instruction back in the tree that made it powerful. Now that's the same thing with God. God tells you, stay at home. And then you sit down at home. It is not your sitting at home that, that, the power, that the, the lies the power. It is in your obedience to his God. So why are you sitting at home? Don't start saying, eh, I don't feel like going. No, I say, no. When God says sit at home, and then someone, why is that God commanded me to sit down? Show where the power is. And the power is going to be revealed. Praise God. Because he would defend himself. He will always defend. So when I tithe, I tithe because God commands me to tithe. Not because I have money or not because I have money to give. I tithe because I'm responding to the obedience of God. And someone says, oh, we are not supposed to tithe. Okay, continue in your way. But I continue being blessed. I can literally tell you every blessing that comes to me as a result of tithe. I'll tell you. So, 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 you don't let anybody deceive you out of obeying the voice of the Lord. See? So, you see, it, it's not necessary. That was what happened to Eve. It's not necessary. Look at the tree. It's a normal tree. There is nothing special about the tree. Look at your tithe. It's, it's, it's a pastor that's just wanting to eat your money. There is nothing. You know, they, they say all those kind of things. And then suddenly he began to look. Oh, really? And you two begin to look. Really? It's true. Does God really collect these tithes? And then you are deceived and cheated out of life. Now, I'm saying this, not because God saw that Adam and Eve were going to do that, but because he had kept in that garden the tree. And it was the responsibility of Jesus. If they obey to the point of that tree of life, Jesus would have still come. And he is the only one that can administer life. Because God had ordained from the beginning that it is Jesus that will have authority to give life to us. Now when he gives us life, that is when we become the image and likeness of God. 
Did you get anything from that? Because our time is up. Praise God. We'll continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.